Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 31st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier wrote up an interesting HTML file on Friday. It's not just an HTML file, but it also includes an ISO. Now, typically we associate ISO files with these large multi-gigabyte uh, DVD or CD images. But uh, well, in this case, it's actually not all that big, about 50 kilobytes and entirely included inside the HTML file. The way this works is that there is a little obfuscated JavaScript that will dynamically create the ISO file from a base64 encoded string and then offer it for download. The intention here is obvious in that it attempts uh, to bypass any filters that are looking for ISO files being delivered via email. The basic mail scanner would just see an HTML file. And of course, HTML is pretty standard. The JavaScript may give it away inside an email, but still at the time when Xavier looked at the file, virus total scores were pretty low. Now they have been improved somewhat since Xavier published uh, the diary. The ISO file has somewhat a better uh, virus total recognition. So if you end up saving that to disk, it may actually get detected. But if you do launch the code inside the ISO file, you will download additional malware. Now, if you see something odd like an ISO file inside an HTML file, you may be tempted to write a Yara signature in order to recognize uh, these files. And well, not sure if you had a chance, but in the Holiday Hack channel, there was challenge. There was actually a real interesting sort of Yara challenge as well. Debugging Yara signatures can be a little bit painful, but the upcoming version 4.2 of Yara may make this a little bit easier. Diddy wrote about the console module that's being included here. A release candidate is available and it allows you to basically debug Yara rules uh, by outputting uh, various uh, constants and such uh, to the console and help uh, with debugging. And Microsoft has a nice uh, blog uh, writing up a recent attack that they have observed where attackers are registering devices uh, with uh, organizations Azure AD. The way that hack works is, well, it starts with good old uh, phishing and attempts uh, to obtain credentials for any kind of user within the organization, then those credentials are then being used uh, to attach an attacker controlled device to the company's Azure AD. This device now being part of the domain, of course, is considered part of the organization and the attacker will use the device to then send additional phishing emails, which now, of course, will appear to come from inside the organization. And as a result, will have a higher chance of success. Now, Microsoft's blog does not stop here. They also then describe how to use the various uh, Microsoft cloud security tools in order to detect this kind of attack. But keep in mind the number one protection that you should have in place and that organizations did not have in place that fell for this particular attack was two-factor authentication. And over the last few months, I haven't really talked much about vulnerabilities in QNAP and similar devices because, well, there are just too many of them. And it's kind of like WordPress plugins. It has become kind of old news. And uh, well, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know not to expose these kind of systems directly to the internet. But uh, in recent uh, days and weeks, it has become again more of a problem with a particular kind of ransomware, Deadbolt, going around and exploiting a very recent vulnerability in QNAP network accessible storage devices or NASes. QNAP now apparently has taken the uh, somewhat controversial step uh, to automatically upgrade affected devices and also remove any ransomware if it already finds it on the system. 
Now, the second part is something that QNAP has done before with updates where they have scanned uh, the device for known malware and in some cases uh, removed it. But uh, this forced upgrade has caused a couple of problems uh, with users. First of all, apparently iSCSI was somewhat affected by it and may need a manual intervention in order to get it working again. And then also interesting, well, uh, for people who were affected by that bolt and that paid the ransom, well, after QNAP removed the files from the system, they no longer are able to actually decrypt any encrypted files. Regardless, well, if you are using a QNAP device, definitely upgrade and let me know if you ran into any issues uh, with uh, the sort of automatic upgrades that QNAP rolled out. Not really clear to me if this was only done to users who had actual automatic updates enabled or if this was done to everybody or if they somehow filtered to only update exposed devices. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again. Tomorrow. Bye.